Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and let's bring 2023 to a positive end with a new video. Now, I haven't really made too many videos in the last year because there really isn't anything new coming out of the flat earth. It seems to be kind of a dead end right now. Uh, they just keep repeating the same stuff that they've been saying since 2015. And despite all of our efforts to give them good information to correct their logical errors, they continue to make the same ones because I don't think they watch any of our videos. Well, that's fine. Perhaps if Taboo Conspiracy had paid attention to a video that I made about a year ago, he wouldn't have made a fool of himself again. But he did, so let's go ahead and go through it. Now, about a year ago, in a video on the Mount Rainier shadow observation, uh, which demonstrates that the sun is angled upward at dusk, Taboo Conspiracy challenged us in the Globe Earth community to show an example of the shadow of the Earth as night was approaching. Because in his understanding, as the Earth rotated, the shadow of the Earth should be clearly visible. So I made him a video about a year ago showing him just that. This is the belt of Venus. Now, as you can see, here is Shamrock Banks Observatory and Otis the Astronomy Cat looking out over my lake towards the east. The sun is setting behind me in the west. Now, as you can see, it's still pretty much twilight out. You can very clearly see the bright sky up here at the top of the frame. Down here at the horizon, you can see the shadow of the earth starting to come up over the eastern horizon as the earth rotates from west to east. And in between, you see a band of pink, which is called the belt of Venus. This is proof positive that the Earth is spherical and the Sun is below the level of the horizon in the opposite direction. Now the yellow arrow here depicts the direction of the sunlight. It is below the horizon for me, but it's still twilight because the upper atmosphere is still fully in sunlight. Then the shadow of the Earth is demarcated right here. This is night. And as you can see, my horizon, which is listed as one here, is below the shadow of the Earth, which is starting to creep up. Now here is red refracted light, which is the red that you see at twilight. This is the belt of Venus. Now later on in the same video, I showed a rocket launch that occurred just after sunset. Now here you see the shadow of the Earth. Notice that the exhaust trail of the rocket is dark. Up high, you see the fully sunlit exhaust trail of the rocket, and in between, you see the belt of Venus. Had Taboo Conspiracy actually looked at my video and comprehended what this one image demonstrated, he wouldn't have made a fool of himself the other day by releasing yet another rocket video. Now, a couple of things that you can tell very clearly from this particular rocket video this is the lower part of the trail of the rocket. It's in the shadow of the Earth, and it goes through the belt of Venus, and then it's fully sunlit up above. Now, even though this rocket appears to be arching downward, the fact that it has not gone back into this belt of Venus, and it's still up here in the sunlit upper atmosphere, shows that this is a trick of perspective, and the rocket itself is not ascending and then coming back down. Now, what do rockets do when they launch? Well, here's our Earth, and this cartridge is our rocket. The rocket starts off pointing straight up and firing straight up into the atmosphere. Now, if it had enough fuel, it could continue to go straight up until it reached escape velocity and just keep going. However, going from a standing start to escape velocity requires an enormous amount of fuel and a very heavy rocket. So what would end up happening is the rocket would start to go up and then what would happen is it would, be, it would run out of fuel and then it would fall back to Earth. Cape Canaveral, where these rockets are launched, is located on the Atlantic side of Florida. And as the rocket went up, the Earth would continue to rotate. And as it fell back to Earth, it would fall back into the Gulf of Mexico, might even hit Texas. So how do we get a satellite into orbit? Well, what happens is, is the rocket starts off going up and then it turns and starts going around the Earth. And then it accelerates until it reaches orbital velocity. And again, if you look at this rocket trail, it went up and then it made a turn and started going towards the east. 
The speed that the rocket needs to obtain to reach orbit is 17,500 miles per hour. Now, it doesn't care what the surface of the Earth is doing underneath it. It just needs to be orbiting the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour. So, if you launch the rocket in the direction of the Earth's spin, it starts off with the, sp with the velocity of the spin, about you know, 800, 900 miles an hour, and then goes from that 800 or 900 miles an hour to get up to 17,500. If you launch in the opposite direction, First, you have to achieve 800 miles an hour simply to overcome the rotational speed of the Earth, and then you still need to accelerate to 17,500 miles an hour. All, el all other factors being equal, you want to launch your rockets as close to the equator as possible and towards the east. Now, Taboo Conspiracy obtained videos of two or three rocket launches and is using the comments of what sounds like about a five-year-old child to justify his claims of the Flat Earth. Let's go ahead and have a quick look. Hello everyone. I'm going to share with you three different NASA rocket launches that supposedly went to space. It's self-evident to any thinking reasonable person that NASA was faking these rocket launches. These rockets most certainly did not go to space. The children get it, but the adults come up with every ridiculous excuse as to why these rockets only appear to be falling down. My favorite is the father telling the child that the rocket only appears to be falling because the earth is churning. Utter nonsense. I'm sorry, but if you believe this rocket is in space, you have some serious issues that you may want to talk to God about. Anyways, enjoy. Is that, uh, is that a plane or is it the rocket? Now in the first launch, you see the rocket going up and, as expected, turning off to the right or the east and going into orbit. Is it in orbit yet? Probably not. I don't think so. But it's on its way. Now in the last shot, you can very clearly see that belt of Venus effect. This obviously took place close to sunrise or sunset. And you see the bottom smoke trail is in the shadow of the Earth. The top is clearly in sunlight. And in the middle, you see that little pink belt of Venus. In fact, one of the children actually points this out to the adults, and Taboo obviously missed it. Let's have a listen again. Sure. Sandy, is it turning, or is the Earth spinning? A rainbow. Sure. Sandy, is it turning, or is the Earth spinning? A rainbow. Sandy, is it turning or is the earth spinning? A rainbow. Now looking at my video from a year ago and the insert of Taboo's video from just recently, you see almost an identical picture. You see the rocket go up uh, through the shadow of the earth, through the belt of Venus and into the upper atmosphere. And even though it appears to be curving, it's not descending back into the belt of Venus in either of those images. Here's the image of the belt of Venus by my observatory, and here's the belt of Venus right here. I don't think the taboo can actually make the connection that that rocket launch is going through the shadow of the Earth here, through the belt of Venus, and then into the brighter upper atmosphere. This despite the fact I literally pointed it out to him last year. 
Now, the only other conclusion that I can come to is that he can make these connections. He does understand fully what that image shows, and he deliberately chose to mislead people, uh, possibly for financial gain, possibly for attention. Uh, this is one of the reasons that I've really not done a lot with the Flat Earth. I'm becoming a little frustrated with the intellectual dishonesty that I see in the science denial community. And it's a good example of characteristic number four from McIntyre, and that is poor scientific logic. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for tuning in and um, supporting our channel. Now I know that I've been doing an awful lot of work over on the astronomy side. Now I am going to do something of interest over there in the next couple of days, and that is that I'm going to demonstrate a method to determine the diameter of the Earth by measuring the transit of the eclipse of geostationary satellites during the equinox. So for more details, tune into MC Tune tonight or stop over there when that video comes out. We're going to be actually taking the measurements at the spring equinox in March. And we will be uh, having some special guests for that. So until then, take care, guys.